Hey, good morning, sir. How are you? Doing well, doing well. So picking up where we left off, our last call was on the 21st of May. So it's only been a couple weeks. How have you been? That's cool. Yeah, so working off the same spreadsheet from, from before. That's fine. Yeah, I got that pulled up. Uh, there was a couple of links I had sent from our last call. Did you get a chance to book a call with anyone or get started on any of those other tasks outside of the main numbers? Yes, yeah, so that's the tax team, right? Mm. Okay, you start the LLC. Yeah, so basically we're thinking, all right, I've been, how long have we had this HELOC for? A couple of years. So we could shop around at a, you know, different banks to see if we can get some kind of an intro rate offer on a second position home equity line of credit in the 250K range of what you have now. Possibly even get more since the value of your home is worth more than what you owe and what the current credit limit is on the HELOC that you have. So there is a world where it's like, all right, our, your HELOC's basically at zero, all right? We can, we can bring that to, and then not use it, shop around, look at different banks. We don't have to stay loyal to the bank that we're already at, which is PenFed, right? Right, so we don't have to stay loyal to them. We can shop around, see if someone else is willing to give us business, right? We talk to these different banks, see what uh, intro rate offers might be available. That would be where I would use my credit toward. If I'm going to go and try and find better debt to borrow from, I'm going to try and get the best HELOC first, mm -hmm. then maybe a credit card. And then it, as it relates to the TSP, you're most likely going to get a very good interest rate on the TSP loan. Do you know what the max you can borrow on the TSP? Is it the same as 401k, like 50k? Yeah. And I think we went over that, right? How, how much the repayment would be back. It's like a five-year repayment back right so borrowing from the tsp to dump into the so here's what i have in my here's what i have in my notes right it was borrowing from policy tsp and heloc to get to the 250k in repairs to build the adu because the 250k investment so what i have here is 250k 250k 30,578. that comes from tsp so now boom I have money borrowed at 4.25%, 30,578. My monthly repayment is going to be like 5 to 600 bucks, right? So cash flow goes down. 128,000, which came from that was another that we were throwing out there and then borrowing 20,000 from policy. All of that brings it down to 70,000 left of the 250k. So we would still have to, you know, borrow more from home equity line of credit to to basically make up for that difference because we'd be we'd be fully leveraged on the TSP, fully leveraged pretty much on the policy. Correct. As long as we don't go on major, you know, splurging events, vacations, if we don't get sidetracked by Bitcoin, as long as we don't, you know, try to buy the next meme stock get distracted with other investments, buy some gurus high ticket course, as long as we don't get distracted in the $250,000 investment that we're moving forward in, then we should be okay, right? It'll feel it'll feel tight for a, a period of time. But when you factor in the amount of income we could be bringing in from this particular investment and the long cash flow that comes with the investment and the tax strategy that comes with the investment, the deductions that come along the way as long as we stay focused don't get sidetracked don't get in another investment don't try to get another property then we should be okay all right so i'm gonna be very very abundantly clear on that it's like we should be okay it'll feel tight we'll still be positive cash flow we're not going to be negative cash flow we're just going to be in an over leveraged position for a period of time and as long as we focus all our time and attention on velocity banking on the home equity line of credit the home equity line of credit will be what we use to pay the TSP loan, pay the pol the policy back and keep funding it over that period of time. And if we increase increase our income along the way, we, we should be okay. Any any does that help overall with what we're looking at here? Does that make sense? Correct. <clears throat> yeah. So let's let's uh let's let's do a little sh a research some shopping around as it relates to the second position HELOC. Um, what what area of California are you 
Are you in? Okay. So let me look up. Correct. That's standard that you're not going to get around that. So HELOCs on investment properties are always going to be higher. And then the amount of banks that will do a HELOC on investment property shrinks as well. I still think that we could find some kind of an intro rate offer, even though the rate would jump to a, to a higher rate. But if we can at least get some kind of a intro or maybe some kind of an increase on the line itself, then that's going to also help that over leveraged position that we'd be in, right? Because at 250K times two thirds is 165,000, 128, and then add another 70. That puts me at 199 with only like 50K of space. Now in California, I do know that, you know, banks do go up to like 500,000 second position HELOCs. But we're just going to have to just do the homework, right? Just call these banks, right? So there's California Credit Union that I'm looking at right now. They've got a they've got an APR intro rate for the first 12 months at 6.99%. And then it goes anywhere from 95 to 11% variable after that. That would be the first bank I would call. I would check them out. You have, you have to call. Because it's not going to say, hey, we do HELOCs on investment. They're not out here marketing. What is it called? Wheelhouse Credit Union? Just found them. It's home equity line of credit. 7.99% for the first 12 months. Up to 10-year draw. They do 75%. But let's see what the math would be on that. If the property is worth 750, 272, 36 times 75. You might be able to get another 100 k on top of the 250 so we might be able to get like 350 uh let's see oh 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 so they add 0 0.5 0 0.5 or one percent on top of the intro so it'd be like 8.5 okay so 8.49 intro rate for the first 12 months so that's basically right at prime which again is not is not bad many other key locks out there in the marketplace on investment that's not a crazy rate right now in today's environment because because on a on a personal HELOC they're only at 7.99 with wheelhouse California Credit Union was at what 6.99 is that what I said earlier so they might do the same thing so we call California Credit Union they might say oh yeah on investment it's 7.99 I mean you're we're not gonna find twos and threes and fours you know that's just not the, the that that time is gone for now <laughs> You know, so we're just looking for a little bit of a of a rate deduction. But I think what's more important is a bigger credit line. I think that's what's going to be more valuable to you. Now, to kind of ease the stress, let's run the numbers and see, OK, what what would be the interest only payment at 10 percent? And what does that do to my cash flow? And and let's run it as if we had no increase in income. Where does that put us? All right. So we're cash flowing anywhere between $921 and $2,500. That's what I last put here, but I want to verify. Yeah. So on the spreadsheet, remember, I think there was a, there was a, a doubling, right? Cause you wrote that your mortgage payment is 170625. Then on the living expense, you put it again as 165592. Which one was the correct number? Oh, okay. So delete the 1655 number, right? So, so 92197 plus 1655 point. That puts me at a cash flow at 2,577.89. You just got done saying that cash flow is around $1,500. So where are we spending money? That brings us down to 1,500 when in reality we should be at around $2,500 in cash flow. I understand that. So here's, here's, let's, let's actually do it now because I don't want to prolong it. So put this spreadsheet in Google Sheets. We're gonna clean this up because we need we need to get clarity on these on these numbers so I can properly guesstimate here what we're looking at. I just sent you a link. I'm gonna invite you to the Google Google Sheet so we can look at this spreadsheet together. Okay. So here's what I did so far. On under living expenses, I removed the car payment and I removed the rental mortgage because you're already accounting for it on the debt column. That alone puts us in a cash flow of 3,484.89. So now you just got done saying cash flow is around $1,500. So we have a 15 plus $100 discrepancy gap. What you said is off. So now looking at the expenses, what could we add in here? When you say things come up, what are those things? Groceries, $800 gap 
put that in there. Gas, 500. Wish in 1,000. Do that in there. We could create a, what, a miscellaneous? One. So, one, 1,125. We were showing 745 on the tithe, but we're actually tithing 1,143. Is more like what we're doing. Should we just throw in a miscellaneous? What would you say miscellaneous? That's like house stuff, cleaning products. Um, are you sure? Are you sure on the eating out that it's only 150 bucks or is it way more than that? Yeah. So you're, uh, how big's the family again? Your family of four, right? So family of four and you put 60 on fast food and 150 on eating out slash entertainment. So I'd be willing to make a bet that Anytime you leave your house, it's at least $100 or more with a family of four. So if we're leaving your house at least four times a week, I mean four times a month, that's that's at least 400 bucks right there. So uh, it's probably safer to put entertainment and fast food together. Uh, we'll still keep it, keep it separate, but those two together, I'm thinking is more like 400 bucks, if not if not more. And then under 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 miscellaneous, what would we put there as like a buffer for unexpected stuff? You put 500 a month on gas. What do we want to put for miscellaneous? Okay, so 900 on gas is more of the more of an accurate number. So I'm gonna put that in there. Let's go back to entertainment and food. What do we what do we think that number or so looks like? We're just trying to get a little more accuracy. So 456, so we could round up and say $500 on entertainment and fast food, correct? All right, so I'm just going to write 250 250 and then we can get we can get more accuracy. And then miscellaneous. This is like unexpected stuff, kid needs a new pair of shoes, buy you a new shirt. Correct. Yeah, we're just trying to have a little buffer in there. That's a pretty big buffer. Yeah, cuz you know, we also want to be aware of where our leaks are. So if we say miscellaneous $400, you're you're almost giving yourself permission to be of a of a good financial story, like you're just giving yourself permission to spend more money, right? But if we if we be realistic about it, like like you said, maybe two fifty, two hundred bucks might be a little bit of a cleaner number because things will happen. Family of four, so things will pop up. Um, but there's definitely opportunity here to be a little more efficient when it comes to how we how we spend money. It seems like our categories that we could really be effective in is definitely the, the groceries, the food, fast food, eating out, as well as gas. Maybe there's opportunity to leverage, you know, one of your credit cards that give a higher cashback rewards on, on gas. And then maybe we do display loyalty to one of the gas companies, not just go to any gas pump, but maybe go to specific ones that either charge less or have an additional reward system with that specific company, you know, we could look into that just to, you know, hey, if I could save 50, $100 a month, um, I'm going to look in that direction, right? And it doesn't cause me to have to change my lifestyle really much. It's just being more efficient. We can look into those things just to recover dollars here, but this is, is more, I would say more, this is cleaner. So we went from thirty. Four thirty five hundred dollars now we're looking at more like two thousand one forty six eighty nine in cash flow so i'm gonna write i'm gonna write twenty one hundred to as low as fifteen hundred in in cash flow per month so now let's run the numbers on us borrowing the t s p money and having a six hundred dollar repayment so i'm gonna go over estimate on on everything here so 2100 minus six now we're at 1500 bucks we don't need to pay anything toward the policy so we leave that loan outstanding but the but the interest will need to be paid on the anniversary date so our anniversary dates in july of every year and the base premium is 2300 bucks correct and but since we're in june right now does it tell you right now what the um what the annual premium is because I know it's 23 plus your PUA plus term costs. So I think it's a little bit higher than that. And the and the loan rate is like 5.6% or is it 5%? Okay. So on we owe 72 right now, we could take out another 20, right? So let's say we did 20 at 92. I'm going to round up say 93,000 O times 5.66%. The interest payment would be somewhere around fifty three hundred dollars. The total scheduled payment is two thousand two eighty two. Two thousand two eighty two plus fifty three hundred dollars. So seven thousand five 
82 is what we should be expecting to pay. From a cash flow perspective, what that looks like is minus 438 because we already accounted for, we already have our policy loan, I mean our policy premiums already accounted for in the living expense, if I'm not mistaken. Let me look for it and make sure it's there. Correct. Even though you pay yearly, we still have to account for it. Um, I don't see it. I see car insurance. So let's put life insurance. So let's put Guardian. So 2,282 divided by 12, going to be 438. So that's so technically the cash flow doesn't go down on a month to month basis. It's just one time out of the year, it's gonna look like you'll be running a negative in that month. That's what that'll look like, technically, right? But, but for now, just so that we kind of have some cleaner books here, now we're looking at around 15, 18, 89 cash flow. So let me rerun these numbers again real quick. 15, 18, 89 minus six hundred dollars again overestimated i think then i think the payment will be slightly smaller than that already accounted for guardian loan interest policy on a heloc not that this would happen all at once but i'm going to run it as if it were let's say we borrowed from the heloc ninety thousand six oh six number eight plus eight one five seventy thousand six oh six that's 199 422 let's round up 200 grand times is 20,000 divided by 12. Interest only payment would be 1,666. A lot of sixes, okay? Technically negative. It would be negative 166 bucks. That's not what's actually happening on a month to month, but on a overestimated scenario here, the worst case scenario is you borrow from TSP, you borrow from policy, you borrow from HELOC, you now owe all this money on the HELOC, say around 200K. It'll never be at 200K because you did it in stages. So while you're doing it in stages, we're doing velocity banking. So you're paying it down as you're drawing from it, right? So at 200,000 owed on the HELOC, we're in a negative position. So that's something to keep in mind of that we never want to breach 200K owed on the HELOC if we do we're technically putting ourselves in a in a negative position on an annual basis on a month to month it won't really look like that but there will be certain months out of the year where it absolutely will feel like that we could guesstimate i would say let's see at 175k owed at 10% 1458 so we would need to keep the HELOC below 175k to have a positive cash flow spread of $100 below 175. The way you do that in this scenario, this overestimated scenario here, the way we do that, we we would have to implement credit cards. So after, let's say you get a new HELOC, 8.99%. Let's see what the difference is on that. 200K times 8.49% is a 4,000, almost almost three four thousand dollar difference in interest costs, almost. So your interest only payment went from 16. 66 to 1415. So at 200K owed for that one year intro period, you would still be at a positive cash flow. Your HELOC is just barely moving down. It's really not doing much. You'd, we would have to get our income higher. As assuming that this $250,000 investment does increase our income. Correct. So we're being overestimated here in this example. Is this reducing the stress a little bit? Because now it's like, oh yeah, oh cool. I, I know what my parameters are at this point. If I can, if I can get a better HELOC, anything below 10% is going to put me in a better position, right? So if I can get a better HELOC at a higher credit limit, if I can get 350 and I borrow two, a max of two out of the HELOC, there's still 150K of space there. So in a worst case scenario, we're running a negative cash flow, let's say, it would take me so many years, right, before my HELOC would max out. So that would mean I that would mean I threw 250,000 on an ADU on a, an existing cash flowing property, and it made no money for multiple years. Like that's how bad this would have to be for this to, to not work out. So the chances of it not working out, we're like way over you know, on in left field, right? Versus in, in, in reality, I think you said it would take about a year or less for the project to be done. So about a year before we can see any kind of return on this 250 on the ADU, right? So that's very practical to say that even in that year that we're borrowing money in the first few months, the where we should borrow first should be our policy, 
and our TSB. So that means 30K, 20K, 50,578 is what we're borrowing money from first before we even pull from the HELOC. So, so you would be just sitting on this HELOC basically. And whatever ca whatever cash flow you're producing, we should be we should be saving that and we would and we would deposit it into our guardian policy. That's going to be the play. Because when you put more money in PUA in the guardian policy, it's going to increase the cash value, right? And and then we can we can reaccess that money if need be. In, in the meantime, I don't really want to be paying off debt, and I don't want to try and accelerate your car. I don't want to try and accelerate the mortgage. I'm going to leave that where it's at. Leave these things. Keep paying the monthly. Um, we do have a credit card expiring July 9th next month. That would be the only thing I would stick in the HELOC, and you get that 136 payment back, and it parks in the HELOC. That would be the only thing. The uh, the other the other credit card, leave it alone. Doesn't expire till April of 2025. So however long 50,500 takes us in that first year of renovating, adding the ADU, however long that 50K lasts us, once that's gone, then we start pulling from the HELOC. Once we've pulled what we need from the HELOC and it's all done within that first year, we would have still have been doing velocity banking, I would say, the HELOC would be somewhere around 190 at the end of the 12 month period because you would have been doing velocity banking. You would have been cash flowing, even though you're pulling, we're still cash flowing. So it's just staying parked. It's going right back in the HELOC, it's just staying parked there. And I would say at the end of 12 months, maybe we're maybe we really all about 190, maybe 195. Then at that point, when it comes to paying interest, technically speaking, the, the interest is getting paid from the equity in there. Whatever we were reducing that interest only payment by, it's not like we're not seeing, right? So our cash flow stood in the HELOC throughout the month and then it got extracted out in terms of interest. It's not like I have to go find that money to pay the interest only payment on the HELOC. Does that make sense? It's going to be coming from the equity in the property. Cool. Yeah. So, all right. So we're clear on that. Then a year, let's say a year and a half, you would have by then already have increased rent on the other tenant on this, on this existing property. So you would already increase rent there. And then you get a tenant on the ADU. That's all going to be bonus cash flow that just, you know, stays parked right in the HELOC. Yeah. Now, this $250,000 investment, once you've increased the rent on the existing property of the existing tenant, then you go to LLC. We can go back all that you put in. If I'm not mistaken, through tax strategy, we should be able to like deduct a lot of that investment. So that would help with, with reducing our tax liability overall, which means more cash flow back into our economy that, again, just stays parked in the HELOC. Yeah. Correct. So we'll lean on them for that. I don't want to say anything that would uh, take us in the wrong direction as it relates to tax strategy, but I'm pretty sure when you invest money in yourself, when you invest money in a, in a business, in an, an investment, there's tax strategy. We got to look through that tax code. There's something there that can benefit us. So we just have that, that proactive approach. Um, all of this is going to factor in to really helping and then push come to shove if we if we need to there's still money some money in cash value then the final piece apply for the heloc a year ago right this year and then a year out it's 2025 the other move that i would make is applying for credit cards i would apply for maybe one or two credit cards whatever the credit limit they give me 15 20 000, whatever it is if i can find credit cards with 0% balance transfer fee, those are typically going to be found at those credit unions. They usually do like six months up to a year. So that would be zero interest for six to 12 months and zero balance transfer fee. Literally doesn't cost you anything to move money out of the HELOC and park it into the credit card. So if we can park 10K, 15K, 20K, whatever it is, that is going to, that interest only payment. And because once it goes off of the intro period, of say 8.49%, it goes back up to 10, 11, whatever it is. Obviously our interest only payment goes back up to that 16, 1500 range. But by then, remember the balance is already down. So maybe we're at 175 now, 170. And then at that point, we're, we know we're just doing velocity banking, job income, 
may increase, right? Um, civil service, maybe that goes up. The church salary, maybe that goes up a little bit. All these different things. Uh, wife's income, maybe it goes up a little bit next year, right? Like even if it's just cost of living adjustment increase going to, to benefit. For me, I think that reduced the stress a little bit. Let's try not to breach 200. Our goal is to get below 175, stay below there. We'll always maintain positive cash flow. Our policy always gets paid on time. TSP will fall off on its own. The payment back to it will fall off on its own. Say reborrow again if I want. Uh, what's your what's your current age again? Two. Okay, so five years from now, it'd be 57, and the, and the TSP is paid off. That TSP would have, say, you know, grown, and five years from now, hopefully this all looks really, really great. HELOC would be down tremendously probably even way before the five years honestly so that that'll that'll play in as well when you when you start approaching retirement where it's like you start able you're, you're able to pull from these other retirement accounts that you built up again all that money where does it where does it sit we just park it right in the heloc correct correct you borrow from the tsp you park it in your policy for now and then when you need it then you then you pull from it to start the project and the month the money got the money got used twice which is also pretty cool so you borrow from the TSP now, our anniversary date's coming up. You're, you're technically giving yourself even more money, right? Because you grew the cash value by the 30. So, so the policy gets fully max funded for 2024. So we don't have to think about it and, and the loan interest gets paid. So now that's done. That's cleared up. Then you're borrowing 50,000 or so from the policy instead of the 20. So you're borrowing like 50K from the policy. When the time comes, in stages. So action steps call these different banks california credit union wheelhouse let's see who's willing to do business work with us let's ask these questions build that relationship once we finally get a new heloc hopefully our goal is new heloc higher credit limit lower rate intro even if it's a percentage smaller two percentage smaller whatever it is i'll you know happily jump on that investment heloc once we have that in place, get started on the project. We're initially borrowing from the policy first, right? And remember, we don't need to jump on this right away when it comes to the, to the HELOC, right? We can kind of sit on it because technically the project starts when you start pulling from the policy. So that gives you maybe a couple months. You would need to pull more money. So let's not rush. Let's not just apply at the first bank we see. Reach back out, book another call when you're like, hey, Denzel, I've narrowed it down to these, these banks, right? And then we'll look at it together and say, yeah, let's go with this one. Let's let's set up that banking relationship, move all our income over there, do all the proper steps. And then now we're sitting on that 12 month intro rate. So we, we would talk to the bank and ask them, just, just get it from get it from the source. So either A, we're closing the HELOC, then applying, or B, they simply replace that HELOC with their HELOC. There's nothing going to be owed on the HELOC, right? It, re it really shouldn't be much owed on it. So if anything, we can either tell them, well, I'll have this HELOC at zero before applying, or if they're like, oh, we'll just replace that, whatever the balance is, you'll just owe it on ours. It could be as simple as that as well. So we'll just ask them. Yeah, it's not that complicated. Just ask them, say, hey, I already have this existing HELOC and I'm looking to switch. So you put put the new bank in the second position and go for it. Okay, book, yeah, book another call, do that action steps. Keep me updated and we'll go from there. Beautiful. All right. Have a wonderful day. God bless. Talk soon.